and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. What's up? Greetings and welcome to another edition of Black Friday right here on Podcast and Chill. My name is Len Moleko and like we do every Friday, we feature prominent, up and coming, and those who are trying to find their way in the business space. And uh, today we have such a gentleman who your CV is actually very impressive. Yeah, we try. No, 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 I'm talking about you. <laughs> Your CV is very impressive. Um, well, yeah, I guess From, I'm, uh, I'm a go-getter. You know, uh, studying at VETS, going overseas. Yeah. But from somebody who did chemical engineering and you ended up doing what you're doing now, wealth creation, being in the property space, yes, how, how did you manage to actually do that shift? Um, I guess I've always had the acumen of being in the business sphere, and uh, I love property. Yeah, I've, I've studied property for a while on my own in my spare time. We live in the information age. You you check how it's going uh, from the basics of rich dad, poor dad. You read it and you realize, hey, yeah. now uh, something can happen here. And I decided to become uh, a real estate agent simply to gain the knowledge, the know-how. Yeah, How is yeah. this done? What's happening? And you study it, you go further. And then we opened uh, the Wealth Creation Network while we were in South Korea. How it came about was when, when you're in South Korea, you notice that almost everything is localized. Yes. On, on, on South Korean roads, I hardly saw a German car. I saw a Samsung car. You, you understand? Interesting, yeah. Hyundai and, and the likes. Yeah. So you realize that they, they keep money within themselves. And what, what's more important about it is that they don't reinvent the wheel. There are systems in place, they're there, and you just uh, follow them, follow the model. So we just looked into organizations that exist. We then decided, okay, we're not going to property, but we don't have the funds, and we don't want to take loans. So we opened Wealth Creation Network Crowdfunding Group. So that's where the crowdfunding part comes in. Yes, sir. And interesting that you should mention that uh, in South Korea, they do everything by themselves. That's sort of like the same philosophy as the spiderweb doctrine. Yeah. Um, the author, the Nigerian author, the name doesn't want to come to me now. Just forgot about him. But he wrote the book. Uh, what's the name of the book? I forgot the book. But yeah. like, yes, it basically speaks about money circling around the same people. Yes, so sir. you build a house, I'm a plumber, and whoever and whoever. So in the crowdfunding thing, I know as South Africans, we have a model of stock fail. Yeah. Essentially, that's what it is. Or it's am I on fail. the money? Get stock fail. You're on the money. It's a stock fail and we're buying properties. So instead of it being a stock fail where at the end of the year you take your money, others buy booze, others decide to buy groceries. Our moms yeah. used to do that. But then we decided, how about we take the same model of the stock fail from Kokasi and we build assets with it? Ntato Rabukasha. I actually didn't even say your name when we started because the concept of what you have is so interesting and essentially you're building a bank for the people which is something that we need in this country yes sir it's a bank for the people by the people our own rules so in terms of getting into this whole thing so you have set up your organization yes sir how then do you go about getting what you need to get well what we're doing now, we have uh, we we accumulated some funds and then we bought land. We bought it cash, no loans, nothing. And then now we are in the process of building. We hired an architect, Black Excellence. We hired a black guy. He's pushing it for us. Yeah. So the, the the concept that we're pushing is modern contemporary design. We are bringing the suburbs to the townships. We know there are rooms that exist. People just build rooms and put them behind them. But yeah. the, the type of lifestyle that they live, we, we want them to aspire for more, have more, and it can be done. And you look at the whole setup. Uh, well, I live in Midrand, yeah. and every day I wake up, there's a piece of land that suddenly has a building or a, big, uh, a complex or a business park yeah. happening to it. So essentially, the business model that you have is let's get together, put money together, build a business complex people can rent people can buy yeah and you become like a lot of the other guys i'm not going to mention them because they're not black owned mm -hmm. but essentially that's what you do yeah there is power in numbers 
you can save up for around 10 years saying, I want to buy this plot, I want to do this. But within these 10 years, a lot is happening. And you're missing out on cash flow that you can get. Like now, for instance, we just raised over half a million in less than two years. Yeah. We bought land and we are building. When you are alone, how long does it take to raise that amount of money? And it was just over 12 people. Yeah. Imagine when you get to the numbers that we want. 200, 300, 500, we'll be raking in millions. Then we take over the industry. We can do it. So in terms of uh, managing this space, uh, we know there are big players in the space. Yes, sir. Uh, you guys are obviously relatively new. How do you then look at the space that you are in and ensure that you grow at a pace that you are comfortable with mm-hmm. and not get swallowed by the big players? Because we know with big corporates, yeah. they are very quick to see a tsunami coming mm. and making sure that, okay, we need to put it out. Yeah. Um, check at the, the bedroom industry. Yeah. It's a 10 billion a year industry. But most of the people who are playing there, it's the, it's the black guys. Yeah. Mustaine. And they're pushing what we're pushing. So we say that that's the space we are playing at for now while we are building and growing. We believe in having uh, the fundamentals and showing that the basics are done and they're done well. Once we ensure that we have done that and we have the finances, it's going to be almost impossible to stop us, especially since we don't need funding from anyone. That's the key part. And the beauty about the whole thing is you played in the property space. Yeah. Uh, you learned about it yeah. while in South Korea. How is it different there to what it is here? And ironically, earlier on today, I had uh, an estate agent come to my place. And she was telling me that one of the things that I struggle with is I don't know how to bridge the gap of the fourth industrial revolution. Obviously, that being technology. Mm. How do you then incorporate the two? Because I look at a house. It's a house. Like, why do I have to have technology attached to selling a house? Well, I guess now most of the houses that are being sold, from my experience, yeah. they sold. Uh, customers now are they're well informed, so yeah. they check apps that I won't mention. That people go there and then they check properties, they check property trends, property prices. Yeah. They actually know more than the estate agent in most cases because they do their homework. That's where the fourth industrial revolution part comes in. Yeah. So you must ensure that you keep up with the times, know what's out there. Information is there now. It's not like in the yesteryear. So in terms of what you guys do, um, you are cutting out, I can call him the middleman, the bank. Yeah. That is the middleman. You're Mm -hmm. cutting him out. You are getting young people because there's a lot of young people who aspire to have property, but they don't know how to start. So you are coming into that space as well in terms of giving information to people to be well accustomed with what they're doing because you can't just wake up and buy a house like you're buying airtime or a loaf of bread True. there's a lot that goes into that how much information do you give to the people that play in your space or the people that join your organization um apart from the people that join our organization i run weekly threads on twitter it's yeah. called property tips with ntato yeah i did the first one it was done on my whatsapp yes, yes. and i had such positive feedback and they said how about you share the knowledge with other people so i just took it i put it on twitter it went viral that shows that people are hungry for the knowledge. So after that, I get over 50 calls a day. People telling me, this is my situation. This is how much I'm willing to pay. This is what's happening. I help them calculate how much money they need to pay extra in order to settle their bonds earlier on. Or also advice, where I want to buy in this location. This is what I want to do. So I ensure that I spread the knowledge. I have the knowledge. I'm willing to share it for free. You just mentioned your Twitter handle now. Uh, just say it again. It's at... My Twitter handle is at Ntato underscore J. Ntato spelled N, the number 2, A, the number 2, O, underscore J-A-Y. All right, cool. We'll also put it up as well with this episode. Yeah. Um, on, on, the, on, on the thread that you did, uh, if memory serves me correctly, because I know I went, uh, I came across it. Oh, yeah. And you were actually mentioning that you can go buy a certain German car mm-hmm. and pay it over five years, yeah. but you can't do the same thing with a house. Yeah. Why, why is that? For those that actually have not seen the thread, but if you can, just follow uh, Ntato's uh, Twitter handle and just yeah. check out the thread that he did because it's actually rather informative. Yeah. So um, I guess it's simple. A house, it's, it's an asset yeah. and it accumulates value over time. In terms of the car, it's a liability and it depreciates. As soon as you drive out of the dealership with a brand new German car or Asian car, the, the price tanks. 
So when I, as a bank, well, people, they, they, they think the bank is their friend. The bank is not supposed to be a friend. It's your lender. So as a lender, they have to make money out yeah. of the money that they give you. So what they do is that they check their risks. With a car, they should pay it within five years. Within these five years, if you default on your payments, they can take it and then resell it and then recoup their value. But after 10 years or 20 years, they can't get any money from that car. Yeah. So it's that simple. But with the house, after 20 years, you bought it for like 1 million. It's now 1.2 million, 1.3. If you default in payment in year 19, they're going to take that house, sell it, and then recoup their funds. Plus the money that you've been paying all these years, it's all gone. So it's that simple. So once you understand the concept of money, you understand the concept of the time value of money. So once you have that, then you understand that, okay, the bank has said that I should pay this for five years. Yeah. But that's to protect themselves. What about me? What's my plan for the future? Now you realize that, okay, they want me to pay the GTI for uh, five years. It's 11000 But my house, they want me to pay off the same value for 5000 over 20 years. How about I decide I want to pay off my house in the five years? You take the balance between the, the two values, you put it in your bond. You, you get your house in five years. You literally own a house in five years. It's normal. It can be done. Wow. Well, the banks are taking us for a ride. But so I come to you, right? Yes, sir. Uh, I give you a call. We obviously put up your details uh, on this episode. I say, I want to purchase the house. Yeah. What services do you offer me besides me joining your wealth creation organization yeah i'm just an individual a normal person mm -hmm. who just wants to buy a house okay what services do you offer me? well i play two distinct uh, roles i'm the ceo of the wealth creation network i'm also a real estate agent yeah so when you come to me and say i want to buy a house you are coming to me in my capacity as a real estate agent okay so the first thing that i do with my customers is i have created a two-page needs analysis i did that questionnaire and we sit together, we discuss over it. Once you're done filling that in, I know exactly that you want a three-bedroom, two-bath, you want pets, you want it either to be a simplex, a standalone, a double-story. I'll literally know everything that you need. Yeah. I'll go into the market, I'll search for that house until I find it. I will come and present to you five of those homes. We look over them, we discuss them, you view Three of them will go for viewing. The only okay. reason you're going to view three, if you view five or ten, it means I didn't do my job. Okay. You told me the specs that you want. However, I then gave you 10 things. So I narrow it down to what you want. We go view the top three. One of them you like, you sign, you get your house. Okay. That sounds uh, fairly easy because a lot of people think buying a house, yes, it is a process. Yes. But once you go through the proper channels, exactly, it can be relatively easy. Now we go to the wealth creation hat that you wear. Yes, sir. All right? I come to you. I say, I want to be part of the 12 people that are there to actually become part of the stock fail, yeah. as it were. Yes, sir. Now, how do I get into that space and how do I become a part of that space? Well, firstly, we have a website, www.wcngroup.co.za. You can get there, make an inquiry, we will get back to you. However, if you manage to contact us directly, yeah. uh, we have forms that you need to fill in to become a member. Okay. The reason you need to fill in those forms is that we need your details and you must commit to say, I will pay X amount of money. As things stand now, uh, our payment is 250 500 1000 and 2000 So you'll then decide, I'm paying this amount of money. And also, in the forms, you'll then fill in a next of kin and also... Also, how much? Yeah, I don't know. Carry on. How ah, much? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it will also be if it happens that I die, yeah. who gets my money? Oh, who yes, gets my yes, assets? yes. Makes sense. That's yeah. very important. So you sign all those things so that we plan them and we put them in a file. Then you become a member. You contribute in any assets we buy. Let's say, for example, we're buying an asset for one million. Yeah. After contribution, your contributions are around 100,000. You were faithful. You were pushing. You were submitting. When we built that asset, What's going to happen is that you own 10% of it. So you own 10% of an asset that you built for 1 million. You contributed 100K. 100, so, so you own 10% yeah, of so it. So it's broken down basically in terms of the contributions that yeah. you have made. But it doesn't end there. Every month, the amount that we make, the income from that asset, 10% yes. of the income comes to you. But uh, the catch is, instead of uh, the normal way of investing, 
if let's say for after five years or ten years you say i guys it was nice being with you i want to leave you own an asset so it was worth hundred thousand at the time uh, I mean, properties increase in value. It was probably maybe two two million at the time. Your hundred thousand is now worth two hundred thousand. We give you two hundred thousand. If you don't want to cash out, because what we are pushing is generational wealth. Wealth, yes. You can leave it for your son. Your son will own that house. Your grandchild will own that house. And that's where the next of kin. That's where the next comes of kin in, comes yes. in. So, in 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 essence, what then can happen is, I can decide that. I'm selling, yeah. and you within the the network yes, decide sir. I want to buy from the guy that he's selling because I had five percent initially coming yes. in. Am I then allowed to do that? Yes, sir. We we have processes in place. We, we we thought of this and we planned it to to the core. So what we did was we say if you want to sell as an individual, you sell to the organization. The organization then holds that and invites members to say, members, we now have 5% of asset A available. Yeah. Who wants it? You come, whoever comes in, come with either a lump sum or the amount that you have. We transfer it to your name and then move on. Okay. No, that sounds, uh, I like that network, right? Yes, sir. So now in, 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 in summarizing the conversation that we've had, I'm going to take you back to the head that you wear as uh estate agent yes there we go that's what i was looking for two as i was looking for now if as len i'm like hmm i think renting is cheaper because i don't bear any of the responsibilities Mm -hmm. there's a landlord that does that but then again i can be len and be like but i want to buy a house yep in advising me what would you say is better Renting or buying? There are pros and cons to both of them. So it's not a straight out answer. However, in my experience and what I always advocate for, buying is the best. Just for the following reasons. Let's say, for example, you've been renting a place for five years. Yes. And the owner wants to sell. I, I sell houses. So I come across a place where I have to sell it. Yeah. But the person has land stays there with his family. Your yes. children go to school there. You've acclimatized to the area. Your wife loves the place. When they sell it, you have to leave. That's the, the basics of it. Yeah. You have to leave. Now True. you must find somewhere else to stay because that's not your house. However, that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. Now we go deep into it. You've been staying there. You've been renting. Life was well. You, you don't incur costs like your levies, your rates and taxes, yeah. the maintenance of the property, which is good. However, if you decide to rent for 20 years, after 20 years, you're going to live as you came in with your bags. You have nothing. You and effectively, nothing you've, to your kids. And effectively, what you've done is you've just helped somebody pay off their bond yes sir with your hard work yes sir usually that what happens with the the concept of gearing the concept of gearing is just basically getting funds yeah. to 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 fund a property that you want to buy but yeah. usually we do gearing when we know that we go, it's going to be a buy to let so i'm buying a property but i'm going to get someone to 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 rent it yes so they'll be paying a certain portion of my total costs, probably around 90% of it yeah. initially. But as time goes on, you must remember that rent increases almost annually. Yeah. So there's going to come a time where my bond costs, my levies, and all the costs that I pay are lesser than the rent that you pay. Then I start making money of it. Is that allowed? <laughs> yeah, it can happen. No, no, I know it, it, pro- it probably happens. Yeah. But according to... The Estates Boards Agency of South Africa. I think there is a body like that. I just yeah. don't remember what it's called. The Estate it, Agents Affairs Board. They, E-A-A-B. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, those are the guys in Hyde Park, right? Yeah. Yes. Is that allowed? Well, what the, the EAAB, they monitor estate agents. Our conduct, how we carry ourselves. To, uh, it's just a professional body. Yeah. But... As an investor, let's say Len says, I want to buy a property, but I don't want to stay there. And try to advise me. Mm. I probably say, okay, go to Centurion. Most of people went there. Buy your property. We do the numbers. We run the numbers. Yeah. Like In five years, 
you're going to break even in terms of your costs. Yeah. After five years, you're going to start making money. It's allowed. That's that's business. You want to make money. Well, yeah, true. Yes, <laughs> it is business. Anyway, uh, Ntato, where can people reach you? Whether they're looking to buy a house, which area can you assist them in? And those guys that want to get into the Wealth Creation Network... Like, how do they get hold of you? Which platform, yeah. numbers, websites, and how are you able to assist them? Um, our website is www.wcngroup.co.za. That's Wealth Creation Network. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter. It's N2A2O underscore JAY. And I operate all over South Africa. I have clients in Cape Town, I have clients in Pumalanga. Uh, I mean, that's uh, I disrupted the market. People come in, they choose an area. Say, I want to work in Waterfall, I want to work in Satin. I have houses all over South Africa. Hit me up. I think I want the house in Venda. Eh? Don't know why I've got it for you. Venda. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Tato, thank you very much, man. Uh, this has been very, very insightful. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you want to get into the property game, if you want to own a piece of the land without sitting there and saying, we want the land. Yes, sir. There is a way to get the land and you can do it through your hard work just hit him up the details are here we're going to put them up and uh yeah if you also want to be sitting here like Ntato telling us about your business it's easy just hit us up on our email address podcast at this is mcg.com yeah this has been black friday and uh like him we building ne? we're building yeah. we're building we're well, taking back the land of course one plot at a time yeah, one plot at a time mm-hmm. and yeah we're taking over the business space one episode at a time this has been black friday my name is len moleko see you on the flip side podcast and chill matt g the ghost lady and len moleko